Hello, hello, I'm Breton, one of our MCAT tutors here at Inspira Advantage, where we help students get into med school and other professional programs. Today, we're going to talk about the different classes of bacteria, as well as how bacteria undergo genetic recombination. Let's start with the three different shapes of bacteria you need to know for the MCAT. The first is bacilli, which just means rod. These look like the classic image of bacteria you've probably seen in horror movies or virus shows. They look kind of like this. You know, just a rod with curved ends. The second type of bacteria you need to know are called cocci, and these are little spheres. That's all they are, just little circles. The final type you need to know are called spirilla, which as their name suggests, they look like little spirals, or when I draw them, it looks like a saturated fatty acid. I'll recolor those to make them look pretty. We can further specify the classification of bacteria based on their metabolic relationship to oxygen. And there are four types of classification of bacteria in this regard. The first is what we call an obligate, anaer an obligate aerobe. This bacteria requires oxygen in the environment, otherwise they will die. The way I remember this is that obligate sounds like obligated and aerobe sounds like air. So they're obligated to use air. The next type of classification is the opposite of the obligate aerobe. These are called obligate anaerobes. And these will die in the presence of oxygen. Again, the naming scheme helps tell us what is going on here. Obligate means obligated and an means not, which is a really important thing to key into. An always means not. So we can translate this into obligated to not use air. If it does, it dies. Another type of bacteria are called faculative anaerobes. These bacteria toggle between aerobic and anaerobic respiration. This means that not only can they survive independent of oxygen, but they can also metabolically use oxygen for energy, but they don't need it to produce energy. So they could be doing oxidative phosphorylation or just glycolysis to make their ATP. The way I remember this type of bacteria is that faculative sounds like facilitates, so I think it facilitates any type of air. The final type of bacteria we will classify based on oxygen usage are called aerotolerant anaerobes. And by now, you may have a good guess as to what these bacteria do. They are unable to use O2, but can survive in its presence. To help remember this, I think aerotolerant sounds like air tolerant, and the anaerobe part reminds me that they don't use oxygen for energy. These are aerotolerant anaerobes. There is one final way you need to know how to distinguish bacteria, and this is based on if they are gram-positive or gram-negative. Gram-negative bacteria are going to have a thin peptidoglycan wall, as well as an additional outer membrane that prevents the stain from showing up as dark purple. This will make the gram-negative bacteria appear pinkish red. Now, let me draw this out because I think it can be kind of difficult to imagine this without seeing it. So let's say that we've got just a cell membrane right here. Well, for the gram negative, they're then gonna have a thin layer of peptoglycan. That's kind of in the middle. And then above that, we have again, a second cell membrane. Now the second cell membrane is gonna prevent any of the dye from showing up. So that's where this dark purple and white kind of averages to a pinkish red color. Now let's take a look at how gram positive would look. Gram positive are going to have a thick peptoglycan wall and have no second cell membrane. Again, we'll draw this out to kind of see what this looks like. So just like in the gram negative, we still have a base cell membrane, but now we are going to have a very thick peptoglycan wall, which I'm showing here in purple. And because there's no outer membrane to prevent that peptoglycan wall from showing up, this is going to be a dark purple color. The final thing we want to talk about in this video is how bacteria can undergo genetic recombination. There are three main ways that bacteria do this. There's transformation, transduction, and conjugation. Transformation is the simplest method. A bacterium simply brings in genetic information from its environment. Transduction is when a virus transfers genetic information into a bacteria. Usually this is by accident. And the final type conjugation is a bit more complex. I'll walk you through the important steps you need to know here. So conjugation is similar to sexual reproduction in eukaryotes. Two different organisms are involved. 
The two organisms are called the F plus and the F minus bacteria. The F refers to a portion of DNA called the F factor. If a bacteria is F positive, it just means that it possesses the F factor gene. An F factor bacteria will find an F minus bacterium and begin constructing a tube to pass along DNA. This tube is called the sex pilus. Plasmid DNA will move through the sex pilus from the F factor bacteria into the F minus bacteria. After the F plus bacterium donates some of its plasmids, the sex pilus will then break down and the two bacteria will move on their merry way. Now you know all of the important bacterial classification as well as how genetic recombination occurs to do great on the MCAT. I recommend taking a picture of this review sheet so that way you can remember and look at this before your exam. Thank you so much for watching our video on bacteria and I will see you next time.